Hello, I'm Carl the Landscape Guy. Nice to have you back with us today. This house's backyard area only goes up to this fence here. For this video, the area behind the fence is to be mowed, tilled, leveled and sowed. So in the end, there will be a nice large open lawn that flows seamlessly from the existing yard. And without the fence, it will create a bountiful park-like atmosphere. The area has not been mowed for decades and has thus formed a thick matted layer of grass. In addition, wild blackberry vines and weeds have heavily overrun the area. Over the years, compost, soil and sand have been dumped in the area, which has led it to be very uneven. It is therefore unsuitable to mow with the tractor. Right behind the fence, there's also a rather steep downhill slope. This terrain edge should be flattened to connect both sections fluently. I will carry out this project predominantly by hand, with only small machines. I'd like to show you how to do such a job at a manageable cost. Alright then, let's get started, because there's a lot to do. First of all, the entire area of approximately a thousand square meters has to be mowed. For this, I use my steel brush cutter FS350 with a brush knife. The entire above-ground overgrowth is cut and shredded. Not just the long grass, but also the blackberries, stinging nettles and everything else that grows here has to go. It's also important that you cut down the matted layer of the overgrowth that has accumulated over the years. The lower you cut everything off, the easier the following work steps will be. It makes sense to carry out this work in the cold part of the year, outside the growing season. In summer, the blackberries will be especially problematic. Their long green shoots can wrap themselves around the knives, jamming them up. In winter, preferably during frost, is the best time to chop them. So I work my way systematically throughout the entire area. If some places are particularly overgrown, you can go over it twice. The advantage of the brush cutter is that it can also be used in bumpy terrain. Once the area has been trimmed down, all the clippings must be removed. This is done by hand with a rake fork and wheelbarrow.
we bring the shredded matter to a desolate area on the property. And since it doesn't have to be driven off to a different location, it saves on cost and effort. It also ensures that the plant seeds in the biomass can re-establish locally. Even for small animals and insects, the layer of shredded mass is a welcome habitat. And this is how the area looks like now. Next, the fence is dismantled. It is a chain link fence with recycled plastic posts. I will disassemble the fence in such way that it can be used again. Saving and reusing materials saves resources and protects the climate and or homeland. The advantage of these recycled posts is that they are very durable and do not rot compared to wooden posts. The wire mesh is coated with plastic and durable for decades. Okay, the fence is removed and now I can mow the lawn as short as possible. Now the teller comes into picture. I have an old Agria 1800. This machine is very old but also stable. The heavy duty design makes them a bit unwieldy though. The working width is 80 centimeters.
viewer tellers are much easier to operate. I would advise you to borrow a teller. You can also buy one, but be aware, cheap models will quickly reach their limits and harder soil. Regardless, if it's new or not, these machines are to be used with caution. The strong tilling machines are very dangerous. In any case, get detailed instructions on the machine when you buy or borrow one. For safety reasons, I'm wearing steel reinforced safety boots. But letting a specialist do the tilling is probably in most circumstances the best solution. So I go over the surface multiple times with the tiller, until the ground is nice and loose. The biggest problems in this case are the long roots from the wild blackberries, which frequently get tangled around the knives. I have to stop the tiller a few times to remove the roots from the knives. But for the most part the tilling has worked relatively well with this old machine. Yet that always comes down to the soil though. Here we have a rather stone free humus soil. The area is now completely tilled and we can move on to leveling it out. In this area there are small lumps and holes. I want to balance this out as best as possible. By the way, after tilling, not only stones and parts of plants have come to light, but also garbage like wire and plastic. I would like to ask everyone to not throw garbage in our environment. Plastic remains in the soil and in waters for hundreds of years, harming every being. The tiller has already spread the soil quite a bit, but now it's time to level the rest by hand. Where there is too much soil, I take some away and fill the holes. The correct distribution of the soil is a matter of practice, but if you get close to the ground and look over the surface evenly, you can usually see pretty good where soil is missing or where there is too much. At this point, you have to ask yourself how perfect you want it leveled out. For large volumes of soils, moving it with an excavator makes sense, but this time I'm doing it with the wheelbarrow. In some spots there is still a lot of roots in the soil. If these interfere with planning, flattening and leveling, you can get them out well with a fork from the loose soil. Otherwise I leave the roots in there, but more on that later. So now that the amount of soil is evenly distributed on the surface, I try to even out the height transition between the two lawns. The next step is compacting the loose soil by foot. As a result, small bumps are immediately visible. If you just let the loose ground sink over time, it usually becomes uneven. We want to avoid that. After that, this white wooden rake is used. It is light and it can produce a fine leveled out area with a little practice. That's how I work the entire surface. Everywhere 
all spots of roots still peek out of the ground, but that does not bother me for this particular project. When leveling out the ground is done, the grass can be seeded. It has rained in between and I'm roughening up the surface again so that the seeds can get better contact with the topsoil. Before laying the grass seeds, I also planted some trees here already. You can find more videos about that on my channel. For the lawn, you can use a simple lawn seed mixture. Seeds should always be a broad mixture of different grasses, but obviously the most suitable grass for this particular location will prevail the most out of the lawn mixture. Since we have a bunch of different grasses and herbs in the soil anyway, I use cheaper grass seeds. Bear in mind that the grass seeds do not germinate well while there's still night frosts. It makes sense to wait until it gets warmer in spring. Of course you can also seed it earlier, but then it won't turn green for a while. And there's a risk of birds picking the seeds or the rain washing them away. If you want it to be dense and green fast, use about 25 grams per square meter. I'm only using 5 grams per square meter here because I want to test out how fast the grass gets thick. The seeding is done quickly. Simply apply full handfuls and it'll be spread fairly even. I'm not pressing it or rolling it either. The surface is relatively flat with no steep slopes, otherwise I would recommend rolling. After two weeks the surface looks like this. It is still relatively cool out, but the area is already quite green. Personally, I think you should always start mowing as soon as possible. From early cutting, the grass will branch out sooner. This helps the lawn get thicker faster. But be aware, if you mow too early, the mower can rip out the young grass seedlings and then you will have to seed again. Now about the weeds in the ground. I want to give up the use of poison and it wouldn't have made any sense financially and environmentally to do a soil exchange. The weeds, blackberries and the rest will initially grow again. But from regular mowing, the unwanted growth will gradually disappear. Because with the exception of grass, none of the other plants are tolerant to constant cutting. This means that most of the weeds will have died after a year. Until then, the blackberries will try several times to grow again, but with each mowing they will be cut off close to the ground again. You can remove all kinds of weeds slowly but surely this way without poison. Now two months have passed and I'm very satisfied with the result. Here and there are still small bald spots. 
Here you can easily reseed again or just have a little patience and it'll grow by itself. I did not apply fertilizer and mowed the area once a week. If you want to have a perfect lawn fit for a queen, you'd go about it a little differently, but for sports and for kids to play on, it is more than adequate. I hope this video of making a flat level lawn is interesting and helpful. I wanted to show you how to do manual work and still get there. The use of lawn machinery isn't always necessary, especially with damp soil, the use of heavy equipment quickly leads to irreparable compaction of the subsoil. And saving on diesel and emissions is always a good idea. The new lawn is now happily used. Here are some before and after shots again. I've planted many interesting and useful shrubs and trees on the new lawn, so please have a look at the videos. These and many other videos can be found on my channel. When you subscribe to my channel, you support my work for free. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. I'm Carl the Landscape Guy.